Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If you're considering migrating to SD-WAN, there are three distinct architectures that you need to consider before making your decision. These architectures are as important, maybe even more important, than the feature functionality of the, of the specific SD-WAN platform that you're considering. Let's take a look at these architectures and understand how that can impact your decision-making process. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and not necessarily a reflection of the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is all about helping IT leaders make great business decisions. So in order to evaluate SD-WAN, we're going to do a quick SD-WAN overview. Just one page. I'm not going to go into the details. I have other videos for that. And then we're going to look at some of the key questions that you want to ask yourself before evaluating the different architectures of an SD-WAN platform. And we'll take a look at the three different architectures, the bookended, gateway, and middle mile designs. And then lastly, we'll talk about how to evaluate those designs. If you're not familiar with SD-WAN, I'm going to link to an other introductory video that I have on my channel in the description of this video. So you might want to go there to get a much fuller explanation of what SD-WAN is. But at a very high level, SD-WAN stands for Software Defined Wide Area Networking. And if it had an elevator pitch, it might be SD-WAN is a flexible, self-aware networking platform that manages network quality, improves management and visibility, and generally lowers costs. Let's take a look at some of the practical benefits of SD-WAN. First of all, it uses all of your bandwidth. So the old primary backup paradigm is completely disrupted by SD-WAN. It will use all of the connected network, depending upon which one better supports a particular application. It creates a secure open network rather than the closed network that we've traditionally utilized, like MPLS. It enables, because it's open, it enables cloud networking and workloads rather than an on-prem or data center centric type of configuration. It simplifies management through a single control portal. SD-WAN consolidates edge appliances rather than having a stack of dedicated appliances from different vendors, which of course increases complexity. Before we evaluate different SD-WAN architectures, we're going to want to answer a couple key questions. The first question is, how much are you going to be in the cloud? Are you adopting a cloud-first philosophy within the organization, or are you moving select applications only out to the cloud? And then if you are moving out to the cloud, will those services be concentrated in the major cloud providers like Azure and AWS, or will they be distributed through a variety of cloud service providers and, and software as a service providers. What application performance specs will you have to comply with in your network design? And then what level of real-time application resiliency is necessary? For example, are you going to UCAS, Unified Communications as a Service, where application resiliency may have a high requirement? How tolerant are you of monthly costs versus capital expenses? Because there are different acqui acquisition models between these various architectures. And then how broadly dispersed will your users be and your applications be? Do you have more of a local or regional footprint or do you have a national or international footprint? And lastly, how complicated do you foresee your rules? All right, so let's get into the SD-WAN architectures. The first architecture we'll look at is the bookended architecture. And this was the original architecture when SD-WAN was first introduced. It's placing an SD-WAN appliance throughout your network virtual appliances in any cloud environment that you might have, and connecting those appliances directly to the internet or MPLS. We'll just talk about the public internet in this example, but MPLS is certainly an option across all of these architectures, to be honest. So the key thing with a bookended service is that it relies entirely on the public internet to get from point A to point Z. And if a destination does not have an SD-WAN appliance, it has limited benefits. Now this SD-WAN appliance is a heavy appliance. It does all the processing internally. That's changing a little bit as, we, as the SD-WAN market evolves, but historically, and I would say even currently, most of the processing is done within the SD-WAN appliance itself. So it needs a lot of horsepower. Now let's look at how this might flow. We have a public internet cloud, a cloud cloud. We have a headquarters with an SD-WAN appliance. We'll have one branch location in this example with an SD-WAN appliance. And then we'll also put a virtual SD-WAN appliance in our cloud environment. We'll insert a UCAS provider also to show how that traffic might be impacted. We'll put redundant internet connections at each of our locations, physical locations, and show that with straight lines, 
Traffic between the SD-WAN appliances is optimized. It is not guaranteed. It is still going through the public internet and subject to the limitations and variations of the public internet. But those SD-WAN devices are negotiating the path and picking the best path uh, with consideration for uh, jitter, latency, and packet loss to support whatever application is, um, is being required at the moment. Now, when we go into areas where we don't have an SD-WAN appliance, I'm showing a curve line here to, to, to demonstrate that we can't optimize those routes. Those routes are completely unmanaged and the SD-WAN device is just trying to figure out from, a, from one side how to best optimize that traffic. The second architecture we want to review is the gateway architecture. Now, again, SD-WAN appliances everywhere, that's, that's true throughout. In a gateway architecture, um, the SD-WAN appliances are connecting directly to the provider gateway. Now, these gateways have some significant advantages. Number one, they provide resiliency for your application. So if you were having a UCAS session, a voice over IP session through your UCAS provider and the link or the, the, uh, the internet connection that you were utilizing went down, that gateway would be able to maintain that UCAS session, transfer the traffic to the remaining link or the surviving link and allow that call to continue uninterrupted. It also has generally the gateway providers have direct connections into the major cloud providers. So that traffic can be accelerated into those major cloud environments like AWS and Azure and GCP, similar to like an MPLS environment. So there are some good quality of service options or advantages to using a gateway service. Again, a gateway is a heavy appliance type of situation where a lot of the processing is done locally on that SD-WAN appliance. But again, that is changing. So let's take a look at how the traffic flows here. We've got our, uh, we've got the same network that we looked at with the bookended model. We've got our headquarter branch, we've got a virtual SD-WAN box, and we have a UCAS provider. In this case, however, we have some gateways in the network from our, from our SD-WAN service provider. And those gateways are interconnected with private network. So when we are talking site to site. It's going through the gateway and going to the other site without any real interruption. When we're going to our major cloud service providers, that traffic is being accelerated and being uh, delivered directly into those cloud service providers. Again, with an enhanced quality of service there. If we have a virtual SD-WAN box in a cloud service provider, generally that's going to go outside of the gateway interconnect. Uh, you may be able to route it over the gateway interconnect. I want to show it outside because it's not always guaranteed. Uh, it, it depends upon the, the SD-WAN provider, but generally it is an optimized, still an optimized service because it's SD-WAN to SD-WAN. When you're going into an unsupported cloud environment, it will take the best efforts route as we discussed with the bookended solution. And the same goes for the UCAS provider. So, so there are some significant advantages with the gateway approach, primarily when you're going into the major cloud providers. Now let's take a look at the last SD-WAN approach, which is the middle mile architecture. In this architecture, you'll have an expansive private backbone connecting multiple POPs. Quality of assurance is assured over that private backbone. And generally you'll have a light appliance, which might just be providing encryption and might have some, um, VPN capabilities, site-to-site -site VPN capabilities if the traffic doesn't need to go through a pop. But let's take a look at our traditional or our consistent network that we've been working with. And let's put some service provider pops here. And the difference between a gateway and a middle mile is that within a middle mile, you have, an, again, this expansive private backbone that interconnects many, many pops. And those POPs are generally located in the major data centers within major metropolitan areas. So generally you'll have a 10 to 15 millisecond hop on to this private backbone. And if your destination point is an application, let's say a cloud environment that's within the same data center as, as the provider has a POP, then we're talking about a one to two millisecond transit delay to get from the private backbone into that cloud, app, uh, into that cloud application or cloud environment. If you're distant application or your distant endpoint, let's say a UCAS provider is not in that same data center, then we're talking again about a 10 to 15 millisecond delay to connect to that provider. But the ability to manage that middle mile, that transit over lar the large distance over the public internet really does accelerate the, the traffic in this design. 
So let's take a look at the traffic flows again. Traffic between locations goes between pops. Now, many of these middle mile providers do allow local breakouts and do allow you to do site-to-site -site VPNs to avoid going through a pop if the sites are geographically close together. So if a pop can be avoided, that is a, a concession that these middle mile or private backbone providers have designed in, into their network. But generally your traffic will traverse over this private network and be delivered into cloud environments or your virtual SD-WAN appliance. Your UCAS traffic again will go over the private middle mile treated for quality of service similar to an MPLS network and be delivered to that UCAS provider with high quality and high resiliency. With this basic understanding of the three cloud architectures, let's take a look at how we might use that information to help inform our decision on which SD-WAN architecture we should use. When we go back to the questions that we asked at the beginning of this presentation, we talked about what your cloud strategy was. If you have a relatively light cloud strategy, a bookended solution might be more beneficial for your organization. But if you have a medium cloud strategy or a cloud strategy that relies generally on the major public clouds, Gateway might be a more appropriate solution for you. If you have a very heavy cloud strategy, a cloud first strategy using various providers, a middle mile solution might be the most beneficial there. Looking at application performance and resilience, if you have low requirements, bookended might be uh, the more appropriate solution. Whereas if you have high requirements, a gateway or middle mile might be the better solution. And then lastly, with regard to your geographic traffic patterns, if you have a local or regional environment, bookended might be more appropriate because you will get less benefits from going through those gateways or pops. But if you have a national or global strategy, gateway or bookend is probably a more valid option for you. Now from an SD-WAN solution perspective, the market is very crowded. These are most of the providers that we have in our portfolio, but certainly not all of them. So looking at the architecture that you're gonna require for your organization is a good first step to help reduce the number of providers that you might wanna consider on your short list. And if you need any help with that, please let me know, I'd be happy to assist. And along those lines, if you wanna continue this conversation with regard to SD-WAN, feel free to reach out. My contact information is in the description of this video. I'm happy to have a, a conversation or toss some ideas back and forth at any time. If you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like, a thumbs up, and thank you very much in advance for doing that. I appreciate it. And if you want to find your way back to this channel in the future, the best way of doing that is by clicking that subscribe button below. That will put my videos in your feed and allow you to come back to this channel at your convenience. I appreciate your time in watching this video, and I hope you have a great week.